This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. This is a surprise video unannounced. It's coming to you out of the blue, just like it hit me personally out of the blue. Today we will be reviewing none other than Joy by Jean Patou. This is the Eau de Toilette, but we will also be reviewing Joy by Jean Patou. This is the Eau de Parfum. The sticker had a bubble in it, though. So it's a little bit. We will be reading this. Uh, show me that gold. Show me that gold. This one hit me like a hurricane. A freaking hurricane. Before we get to it, may I remind you to, if you haven't already, but like my content on my channel, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube now. And push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. By becoming a member, you gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dick of All Spelled Together on Patreon. Join me there as well for extra perks. And this video, even though it's a surprise, has been is being filmed now live in front of a virtual studio audience, studio audience, bunker audience. So guys, get ready to review Joy by Jean Patou. Now, it has first come to my attention that joy is something that I might want to tackle my tentacles into. When I've seen one of the loves of my life, may you rest in peace until I get there, Pete Burns from Dead or Alive, photo of him with a bottle of joy. I was like, okay, you know what? If Pete liked it, I'm gonna give it a go. Pete had a very particular taste and style. Um, and clothing, and, and life, and, and physiques, and, and body, and, and sound, and everything. I mean, the guy is, is just an art piece. So I was like, okay, joy, huh? Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I went from the bottle that he had. He had the current formulation. Well, from back then, current formulation. The formulation available now. As I was starting to... As I was gearing up to get into joy, uh, no pun intended, I, you know, well... It was released in 1930, so it's like, oh gosh, it's one of them there. Went through a billion and one reformulation, probably. Then you go down that rabbit hole, and you start reading about it, and you start reading reviews about it, and you realize there's a bunch of opinions out there, and every opinion is different. And people are telling you, don't get the Procter & Gamble version. Because, yeah, at a certain point, Procter & Gamble were making them too. Like, don't get this, don't get that version. Get only the vintage. Get the 70s. Get the 80s. But then, throughout that craziness, you know, also I found out that it's been discontinued. Literally a year ago. And then I was like, huh. Well, you know what? When something's so colossal, because joy... Jean Patou's Joy, the first release of Joy, was marketed as the world's most expensive perfume. With the biggest amount of jasmine flowers you could imagine ever inside a perfume. It, it defined history and perfumery per se, in many ways. Okay, we're going to get to those ways in this review, but envision something so potent, powerful, important for the for perfume history being discontinued. Being discontinued, rumors have it, because LVMH, who also owned Dior, um, purchased Jean Patou, the brand, and allegedly they decided to discontinue Jean Patou's Joy. Here I have the boxes as well. The Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. I have, you know, the Eau de Toilette I got in a 75 mil, the Eau de Parfum in a 50 mil. LVMH, who also own Dior, decide to discontinue Jean Patou fragrances, and in particular, Joy. And right about the same time, what perfume do they launch? Joy. You got to be kidding me. You discontinue this for the crappy thing that you release under the Dior name, Joy by Dior. 
Oh, okay. Okay, LVMH. Great move. Butchering the history of fragrances because of a quick buck. Anyway, that infuriated me for a minute, for a hot minute, and then I started hunting. I was like, well, you know what? I don't care what people say about reformulations, the this and the that. I want to give this perfume the proper goodbye that it deserves. What is a proper goodbye? Well, buying the last batch ever produced, basically. In the way it's produced, with the love or lack thereof in which it's produced in, and deliver a verdict on the closing chapter of a fragrance that for decades has echoed in the memories of many a perfume and fragrance lover out there. So we're going to give it the proper respect it deserves. We're going to give it the proper farewell that it deserves. Envision a perfume so potent, a blast of jasmine to a point of nausea, comparable in many ways to Chanel Number no. 5. Now imagine Chanel Number no. 5 just being discontinued without any official huge announcements, just Chanel just stopping producing it. Just hush, hush. It's just gone. Imagine something of that magnitude. Imagine Chanel number five just disappearing. All right. Now, Jean Patou's joy has not profited and gained so much from massive, massive commercial investments meaning, you know, Jean Patou didn't have bucket loads of millions of dollars to invest in promoting it like Chanel did with number five. So it didn't stand a chance from the beginning. It didn't stand a chance. But here we are. We got joy. Before I spray it, and we have to wait to spray it, <laughs> let me touch base on something I mentioned before. Jasmine. This has the biggest overdose of jasmine a perfume back then in the 30s ever had. Today, it's debatable. There could be perfumes out there that have more jasmine than, than this. There could be perfumes out there that use more or less synthetic or natural. Ja natural jasmine is so expensive to get. So most jasmines are synthetic nowadays. Almost all of them are, especially mass, mass release perfumes. But anyway, whatever. Forget all that. Again, we're going back into that rabbit hole of reformulations. Forget about it. Forget about it. We are talking about the jasmine, the over saturation and the bombastic overdose of jasmine of yasminum grandiflorum the grandiflor jasmine which is inside here so let's talk a little bit about jasmine before we test it out on the skin now you're going to be thinking wait a minute why aren't you reviewing the perfume oh this is the review of the perfume i've been living with this day and night for a long time now okay so the memory of it alone is enough to review it, but we will get to the spraying it. But don't think that I will review it only from the moment I'm spraying it. This is already a review because the mood, it's set. The tone, it's set for me. I'm already living joy right now. So that's why the review is already happening now. Let's touch base on Jasmine. Now, first of all, Joy was released in 1930. The nose behind it is called uh, Henry Almeras or Henry Almeras or Almera. Don't know how to pronounce the name. Top notes now are listed as tuberose, Bulgarian rose, ylang ylang, aldehydes, peach, lily of the valley. Mid notes, jasmine, may rose, orchid. Base notes, musk and sandalwood. The jasmine is the grandi, yasminum grandiflorum. It's the day blooming jasmine. What we have in joy is not the, yes, the jasmine sambac, which is a night blooming jasmine. The night-blooming jasmine being more green, earthy, soft, suave, powdery, less indolic. The yasminum grandiflorum, the day-blooming baby here, uh, that one is all about the indoles. Jasmine being the flower. Now, some jasmines don't have any odor. The genus of yas the yasminum genus is really huge. There's a lot of jasmines out there. Some of them vary in colors and shapes. Some of them have strong smell. Some of them have no smell at all. Uh, but for the ones that do have a strong smell, those are the ones that have in 
almost the entire plant world out there, floral world, the biggest percentage of indoles in them. Why do I keep pressing this point of indoles? Now, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, Super Dick Ball Spelled Together, you would have noticed I've been hinting at this the whole week prior to uh, this review, the indoles. What are indoles? Let's get into my research here. Let me tell you where it's at, you guys. There's a lot of base to cover here. A lot of base. So, indole is by definition an aromatic heterocyclic compound which contains six membraned benzene rings fused to a five membered nitrogen containing pyrrole ring. And you best believe it smells. So, just giving you, yeah, I draw these things to memorize them better. So, this is how indole looks like. From a chemical st standpoint, right? We got the six and the five, they're connected there together. This is this is an indole. Doesn't mean much, right? But we're getting technical here because I want you to understand something. For those of you who know, you know. For those of you who don't know, who just clicked on a random review, who's going to want to click on Joy by Jean Patou Review on YouTube? It's not a famous perfume. People aren't going to research it, but if you do... Good that you're here now because there's a lot to say. In its pure and isolated form, indole is more like musty, wet, yet also a penetrating, sharp, clean smell. A combo of wet dog, stale, hot breath, and mothballs all rolled into one. This compound does contribute to the smell of feces. But trace amounts are also found in white florals like jasmines, tuberose, neroli, orange blossom, gardenia, etc. The feces smell is created when high concentrations of indole are mixed with humidity and the surrounding decaying molecules found in poop. Now, don't think that by passing by a, a huge vine of growing jasmines in the midst of uh, whatever part of the year they're growing in, which part of the geometrically which part of the planet you're in geometrically geographically which part of the globe you're on passing by blooming jasmine doesn't mean that you're going to get that feces smell no why not because every single tiny flower has such a tiny amount of indole in it that it emanates it even if it's a hundred of them they're emanating it at the same time before that indole gets to you it's mixed with the air it's in with all the other smells that are in the air as well and all of that together comes to you, to your nose, and it smells divine. It smells intoxicatingly delicious. There is no smell of poop there whatsoever. But however, imagine now pressing that oil out of tens of hundreds of thousands of these flowers. Condense it into one little vial of essential oil. All of that that is usually living in the space is condensed into something so small you're going to get that feces smell then. In trace amounts, around 1%, the stench of pure indole actually mellows, losing the mustiness and becoming more floral, more ambient. In fragrances, natural oils that contain indole are often used to bring intrigue and seductive edge to a scent, providing an indescribable, underlying, animalic note that allures to the primal senses, similar in a way to how pheromones work. When it comes to fine natural fragrances, indole serves a new purpose. When it comes to natural fragrances, indole serves the purpose of being seductive. It seduces. But here's the twist. The white flower, jasmine, there are different colors, but the one that you collect for the... Um, fragrance purpose. It's white. The whitest, cleanest looking fl flowers smell the dirtiest. This is the twist. Gardenia, jasmine, hyacinth, tuberose, orange blossom, uh, and the bitter brother of orange blossom, neroli, are all extremely rich in indole. Rose, lilac, and honeysuckle also have very small traces of it, but they have it as well. And the grandiflorum, the Yasminum grandiflorum, holds a particular high amount of indole, strong indole. Most jasmine oils contain around 2.5% of pure indole. Now, how does it smell? 
Wet mustiness, dirty sweaty skin mixed into a narcotic floral sweetness of fresh jasmine. That is what it is. When you pass by a blooming jasmine in nature, it smells great. But when we condense it, it's a totally different look. Totally different vibe, totally different feel. The key of indole and the key to its seduction is dilution or dilution. You dilute it and you strip it down of, of a certain percentage of indole by dilution, you gain in seductiveness. Now, the concept of concentration holds true to all fragrances. Through dilution, the pure essence essences are received by the nose as they are meant to be smelled in real nature. This way, indole becomes much more a silent actor while simultaneously being the one element responsible for breathing life into the perfumes. You know what's so funny? Jasmine actually belongs to the family, comes from the family of olives. It comes from the olive tree family. Just a little side note. Olives can also have a particular smell, but that's a different reason. And the funniest thing of it all, the most intense smelling jasmine is not even a jasmine. It's called the star uh, jasmine or the star yasmin. And the star yasmin comes not from the yasminum genus, but from the trachylospermum, like sperm, <laughs> spermum, trachylospermum genus. So that's the most fragrant jasmine, and they originate in China and the Middle East and Far East. There's also Spanish jasmine, there's also the primrose jasmine, the Yasmino Mesni. Um, there's a lot of jasmines out there, but the Yasminum Grandiflorum is the one that we have in joy. Now, before I spray it on, one last thing I have to tell you. An another very important component in joy is linalol. Now, linalol, lol, let's get to the linalol quickly here as well, because I've been doing my research on linalols. There's several reasons why jasmine flower might smell ratchet to you. One aspect is the indole, the amount of indole it produces, but the other aspect, relatively newly discovered by scientists, is linalol. Why? They take the example when they talk about linalol and jasmine, they say, you know, the, in cultures where young girls put jasmine flowers in their hair to dance or for some special rituals, they always prefer to pick the freshly um, bloomed, the, the, the freshly opened uh, flowers to put in their hair. They don't like to use the flowers that have been open for several hours even though the ones that have been open for several hours are also pretty fresh. Why is that? Well, scientists found out. Let me actually quote these little, these gentlemen. Uh, one, uh, Two scientists. One is called Ajit uh, Shasani, and the other one is called Chandan Ch Ch Chanotia. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, guys, or ladies. And, but So listen, the linalol. Now, this is what they came up with. Um, scientists from uh, CIMAP, the Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants in Lucno, found that uh, jasmine buds emanate a sweeter smell. But the fragrance turns more pungent because of chemical changes that take place as these buds bloom. They found out that linalol, an aromatic compound responsible for the sweet smell, not just in jasmine, but in many other flowers, it makes a switch from one form of linalol to another form of linalol during flowering. Gather enough of the, you know, they usually catch the jasmine for, for perfume purposes as the second they bloom, they harvest them when they're really fresh and young. But let's take, for instance, the case if you harvest them a little bit too late. It's not just about the indoles. You're going to have a lot of them in there. But if you harvest it a little bit too late, you're also going to have this other linalol. What is this other linalol? So linalol is an important industrial aroma molecule used in flavor and fragrance compositions. It is naturally found in two forms. We got the R linalol and the S linalol. Now, they both have the same chemical composition, but there is a subtle change in, in the way different molecules 
are stacked up in them. And here we go into David Lynch and Twin Peaks territory because structurally the R linalol and the S linalol are literally mirrored images of each other. Okay, in vision, if one is posing like this, the other one will be posing like this. It's like boom, boom. They're the same thing, just mirror, like twins looking at each other. They're structurally the same, but the molecules are stacked in them in a different way. They are mirrored images of each other. It's a very Tulpa Twin Peaks reference. Anyway, so while the R linalol of the bud form of the jasmine has the fragrance of lavender, fresh lavender scents, scent, the S linalol smells like coriander and a little bit um, mustier. So there's a switch happening from R linalol to S linalol and the bud transforms into a fully bloomed flower. As the flower blooms, the levels of R linalol go down while that of S linalol increases. The higher presence of S linalol explains why most people do not like it so much. Scientists have been capable of isolating the gene responsible for the production of R linalol in jasmine and are in the process of identifying the gene that expresses the S linalol. Once the S linalol gene is finally isolated, scientists hope to be hope to be able to develop better smelling jasmine varieties. They ain't there yet though. This would also uh, then um, aid in producing better quality natural fragrant products. You see, this was very necessary to, to talk about because th that's where we're at here with joy. Now, I'm going to spray it. Oof. <laughs> it's a tough one, Waylon. We're going to spray the eau de toilette here. And I'm going to do the pure, the eau de parfum here. <laughs> this thing is so intense that it's disgusting in the best of ways. It is, when you first spray it on, you get that boom of poison green depth and you get almost, you almost smell like you're going to get an allergic reaction to the amount of flour that's in there. That's how my nose reacts to this. It feels like it envelops me in my, my, my throat and everything's just going to expand. That's how it feels. And that green dissipates quite quickly, leaving space to an overdose of indoles. And if we got the linalols, and yes, in the ingredient section in the back, they both have linalol listed. Um, where is it now? I'm looking for it. Yeah, there it is. Linalol is listed in both. Uh, positioned in different places in Eau de Toilette than it is in Eau de Parfum. Another thing that's fascinating, both Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum list 78% uh, alcohol. I'm like, so what's the difference? They have the exact same ingredients listed as well, just different coordinations. Let me zoom it in quickly so you guys can see. So um, the this box is the Eau de Toilette. This one is for the Eau de Parfum. So, it looks like the ingredients are different, but they're the same if you actually, you know, list them. They kind of look the same at the beginning, then they all go messy in between, in the middle. They're like very different from one another. And then at the bottom, they kind of join forces again. This one is made in France by SA Designer Parfums, right? So anyway, this has the, um, <laughs> the S linalol, the one that develops later. And the indoles are insane. Insane to a point where on my skin, this does not just go fecal. This thing goes sexual to a point where you can't take it. You can't. It's that intense. And it's that um, heavy. 
Um, it doesn't smell of something that came from the 30s. It doesn't smell like a dated, aged perfume. It doesn't smell like, oh, something your grandma would wear. It smells like a concept of how much can you push reality to a point where y you... You know, it's just to the limit of bearable to a point where you're like, okay, smelling this, I think if, if it were any more intense than this, you, you wouldn't be able to sell it. I, <laughs> my, my nose wouldn't be able to, to bear it. This is just at the limit where it's so fascinating to me. It's so ugly but beautiful at the same time it, it it repels you it's repulsive and yet it smells familiar in the same way bodily odors mixed with melting florals that have been sweating in the sun for hours and hours and haven't washed in days i mean this is now it's turning to that indolic yeah it's it's twisting. That greenness is dissipating, and as it dissipates, all we're left are with this this indolic fecal element that that goes so deep. That's what I'm saying. To me, it's so conceptual in the form in its goodbye formulation in the last formulation. By the way, here's the batch codes: uh, eight seven um, eight two seven zero for eau de toilette, and eight two five nine for the eau de parfum. Um, first I got the Eau de Parfum and then I got the Eau de Toilette because the Eau de Parfum I thought wow this is too intense maybe this fecal aspect won't be present in the Eau de Toilette so I got the Eau de Toilette no same thing <laughs> it's, like, it's the same they're insane so as I said it doesn't smell like something from the 30s or something that kind of takes you back in time in the form it is today it smells like a, a concept of the future it's like um, it's like a commentary on the on the times we live in this this smells like all of the dissatisfaction that you have with, with life at the moment. And it's amazing because it, it delivers a, a social commentary through perfume form. There's nothing more niche than this, you guys. Get yourself a bottle of Jean Patou, not because you want to wear it and love it, but because you want to remember it. You want to remember also the drama that goes with this. The drama that goes with this. Now, the interesting twist here, however, and you know I always say gen um, perfume knows no gender. Well, here's the twist. With this one in particular, hormones play a very, very, hormonal balance in the skin play a, we're talking about bodily fluids to, to the point where, you guys, it's undeniable. Interesting though, women and men, all of the reviews I've been watching or reading in text form online in preparation to this review, each and every woman reviewing, testing out Joy, says it's delicious. It smells so floral and divine on them. No woman mentioned the indolic aspect of this perfume. It's only the men. Only the men that say, this one is amazing, but it's indolic, 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 indolic. Like, if you don't love your indoles, forget about it. Only the men mention the feces. It develops like this on my skin. I'm interested to know if any of you ladies out there, also in the chat, have tried Joy. And what do you think how it smells on your uh, actual skin, this particular composition? I can tell you this. It takes me places, and not necessarily smelling it. It's not like I'm repelled by it, and that's it. Like, oh, here's the pun, here's the joke. It smells like feces, ha ha ha, the perfume is, you know. Mm. I have an evolved sense of, of smell, and obviously there's more to this. I've been working and testing perfumes for so many years, my entire life, really, since I was a kid. I love perfume. So to me, this doesn't smell bad. Yes, it smells repulsive. Some wafts of it are really repulsive, but it's the smell of repulsion, which is attractive to me. So I'm very much attracted to this perfume. So the visuals it gives me is 
is a tormented, passionate nightmare, a sort of nightmare. I don't know if you ever had this type of nightmare where you're sexually engaged in a sexual encounter, but the actual sexual encounter never happens. You never get to the climax, you never get to the point, you never get to conclusion, you never finish anything because it's a nightmare. So you're 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 propelled towards you know this visualization of whoever you're having this encounter with but it never gets to it really because either somebody always enters the space in the room so you have to restrain yourself or if you go at it with each other something constantly within the cosmic energies of the dream happen so that you're constantly separated from each other so you never get to the point but it constantly delivers the tension and you're constantly living that tension. You're constantly living the arousal. You're constantly living. You're just about to erupt, but you don't. And this is not about edging. This is literally about your whole body is shaking with, with rupture, <laughs> the rupture from within. And bizarrely enough, even though there's a lot of synthetics in here, you know, I'm sure they did not, you, I mean, you never know, but I don't think so, given that it, you know, this was not a huge success in the last years before this continuation. I think they use some synthetics, obviously, to substitute the original natural jasmine. Natural jasmine is used really for some special occasions in the pure extract forms of certain perfumes. As Chanel states, you know, they state that they, that, that, that they use not synthetic, but original jasmine in the pure perfume of Chanel Number no. 5. But who's to know? Very famous is the jasmine of Grasse, the jasmine that grows in the fields of Grasse in France, which is, you know, they all pride themselves for using the jasmine from the fields of Grasse because they say that the jasmine of the fields of Grasse is one of the most fragrant jasmines in the world. So Chanel has its own fields of Grasse jasmine. In fact, the ja jasminum grandiflorum that grows in Grasse has literally by perfume, by the perfume world, just been renamed, you know, the uh, the grass jasmine, the jasmine of grass, even though it, it is the grandiflorum jasmine. But anyway, so this nightmare that it makes me go through, it's painful because there is no relief. You do not come to a point of relief, but you are in constant state of arousal. That's joy. Now you see, for so many years, I thought, oh, well, Joy, what a lame name for a perfume. And I thought, oh, yeah, it's going to be this cliche of the 30s, like fun and sunny and joy. And so, yeah, it's a lot of jasmine, but it gives you that floral, that feeling of joy, of like richness and opulence, the most one of the most expensive flowers, ingredient flowers used in perfumery. That's joy. No, that's not what joy is about. The name joy, to me, represents that relief once you actually manage to come to a, some sort of climax, you know, climax. It's like this one announces it to you. It keeps telling you like, that's the joy you would get if you just knew how. And here is the magic of this perfume. It keeps you guessing. It's like a puzzle that keeps throwing all of these curveballs at you. This the most intense sexual smell that, that you can get. And it's, it's, it's unbearable at times. It's just too, right now, spraying it on two hands is way too much. Like I'm suffocating as I'm talking to you. Um, it's, it keeps throwing you these curveballs and it, it gives you hints of like how pleasurable it can be, but you got to solve the puzzle. You got to figure out how it works for you. Where's that limit? You know, in an SM relationship, also like with pain, how far can you push that pain until it either becomes unbearable pain or up to the point where that pain becomes pleasure? Hellraiser comes to mind, the movie from the 80s also. It's, a, it's, it's the sweetest type of torture. This perfume is one of the most dark things I've ever smelt in my life. It, um, it's tormentuous, it's tumultuous, it's ruthless. It kind of wants to caress you, but, but it's going to rip you apart. It's going to, it's going to scratch you. You're going to bleed. It's going to hammer stuff through you. Um, 
And you're going to love every minute of it. And this is the scary part. This one triggers in many ways. In many ways. It, it triggers you in many ways. Uh, best for me, best dosage for me is like half a spritz behind the knee. The further it is away from the nose and the more it has time to develop on my skin before it hits my nose and the better it smells. That's my form. As I was reading to you before, dilution, or dilution is the secret word to creating uh, attractiveness with this one. So diluting it by spraying it sparingly far away from the nose in the most interesting pulse point on my body, which is behind the knee, really delivers a very interesting version of it. Still in Dolic to a point where you almost can't handle it. But then I've also tested it out, layering it with other fragrances. Uh, if you layer this with Obsession, it's it, 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 it you become a feral beast. Uh, it's all over the place. Uh, if you combine it with Fougère fragrances, like I've, I've combined it with Dolce Gabbana pour Homme to cool it down, I thought, you know, if I had like a cooling scent, like uh, the type of Fougère that Dolce Gabbana pour Homme is, you know, with the bergamot and with all the lavender... Because I was reading about the linalol and about the arlinalol smelling more like lavender. I thought if I enhanced the lavender aspect on this, I could balance it out and take away that coriander smell from it and make it more floral in a way. It tames it just a little bit. But that indolic monster from within, it comes out sooner or later. It, it's still there. It's still there and it's still so aggressive. And, and the funny thing is, um, as indolic and as stanky as this can get, it still is the most floral a flower can get. It smells like flower at the same time. It smells like a freaking flower. But it's repulsive. It's amazing. It's disgusting. But it, arou it arouses you. you. You you want it, but you're kind of afraid of it as well. You know, it's like also like having sex for the first time with somebody you don't really know. So you're kind of also scared of the STDs and all the possibilities that can occur there. Always have safe, safe from check to sex, guys, by the way. But I'm just saying, even through kissing, you can transmit who knows what diseases. You can't wear a condom while you're kissing, can you? But this one kind of brings fear, but a huge desire to, to find out what's on the other side of that cavernous, tumultuous passage that this one takes you on, you know, that, that whole trajectory, it's cathartic, it's liberating, whether it be liberating because finally after a certain point it wears off on the skin, it mellows down to a point where it's, it doesn't create so many volca volcanic eruptions within you, then maybe the relief comes, the relief comes once it settles in, or maybe the relief comes knowing that you still have some left in your discontinued bottle and you know that you could spray it again and you know that you can't live without it anymore. I'm hooked. I know I'll never be able to live without joy anymore because, as I said, that fear of it going the wrong way on my skin in a, on any given day, time, or temperature, or humidity levels, but then also that fear of not having it anymore Knowing that this is discontinued, then I'll, that some people in the future will never know how this actually really smelled. I mean, it's insane. This thing deserves a space in a museum. It's insane. And I've stocked up. I bought up like leftovers from all these websites that are selling leftovers of these because they're... I, I have a couple of... <laughs> I've stocked up. I like... I stocked up. And uh, call me crazy. But... I just felt like, okay, if I don't stock up on this, if I miss out on this, this smell is the most... desirably disgusting thing I've ever smelt in my life. And it's like, I crave it. I crave it. Perhaps it takes a bit of a... a sadist, well, a masochist to, to really enjoy it because there's a lot of pleasure in this type of pain. Uh, if smell can be translated into pain, olfactive pain, uh, it, it's a smell of relief. It's a smell of release, no pun intended, but 
that tension of relieving and releasing and not getting to the point, but knowing that you're almost there and you're closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, but you never quite get there. That's what joy is. What a masterpiece. Even in the current formulation, what a masterpiece. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Let me get to your chats. Maybe you got something to say on joy. Uh, wasn't it the most expensive perfume ever back then? Asks Emilio. Yes, it was marketed as such. Oh, joy. I have always wondered. I know Marilyn Monroe wore it, says Candy Fluff. Helen says, just arrived. Can I believe I have just bought joy forever for my birthday? Joy forever is very different, Helen, to joy MK says, Joy by Jean Patou used to be known as the most expensive perfume in the world in the 1990s. Helen says, I love uh, Jean Patou's Sublime. MK says, so Jean Patou's perfume boutique near Rue Saint-Honoré, Cambon, Castiglione, closed down. No, Jean Patou, ah, the perfume boutique, yes, uh, but Jean Patou has, the clothing brand still continues. Rich Mitch says, I hate Jasmine. Well, it's very indolic. <laughs> Uh, Rich, I actually enjoy Grandiflorum, says Rara, but joy is a lot for me. Good Lord. <laughs> love a good indole, says Emilio. Oh, Emilio, if you love a good indole, this is where it's at. Candy Fluff says, is this the joy of the toilette or of the parfum? Or the toilette and or the parfum. You best believe when Jacob delivers a review, it's going to be a full rounded one. This is all that's available uh, still today, the last production that existed were these two. There is a pure perfume from a couple of years ago in a Baccarat bottle, in a crystal bottle, but that's around a uh, thousand dollars. Um, Emilio says hetero and sick, very fitting. Um, two flowers, one pot, says Emilio. Oh my God, that video, you guys, the two girls, one cup. Woof. Child, that one will reverberate in pop culture for the rest of eternity. Rara says, I have yet to smell an endolic scent that smells fecal to me. I told you, women do not smell it out the same way as men do. Usually I get nail polish, paint thinner, gasoline, and ammonia or urine. Civet gives me poop, says Rara. Aisha says, Helen, I've never tried it. <laughs> Jacob, what do you think about Patu clothing? Uh, Revamped by Guillaume Henry. Uh, I love it, actually. I really love it. I really, really do. I really do. And Guillaume is a hottie. Although, like, he's one of those strange French guys that never age. He never ages. It's a bit scary. He's like a vampire. Uh, Jasmine and Olive? What a family tree! <laughs> right, Aisha? Uh, Ellen says, I love Patu bottles. Oh, these are gorgeous, by the way. Check out by the way, when I take the stopper off, look, it has like this little kind of yellow diamond on top. And then, but it's actually transparent. See the, the Jean Patou logo? So there's this gold, but it's actually cut through. So look. So you can see through it. See? There, I'm covering it now with the finger. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Stuffing it with a finger. <laughs> Puns are intended at this point. Um... Black pepper is a beautiful fragrance. Daniel says, for anyone in Australia, Patu Joy is still showing up as available on the David Jones department store here website. There you go. But it's expensive. I just says, I want to go to the flower fields at midnight. Richmond says, 80s bottles of Patu pour homme go for over a grand. Um, beautiful bottle. Oh, that jasmine is a sultry little lady, says Aisha. Uh, Helen says, I want the bottle. Emilio says, the deep research of it all. I'm living for it. <laughs> Thank you, Emilio. Yeah, a lot of research. Aisha says, this is fascinating. Makes the jasmine seem magical. Look, he's scared to do two sprays. Oh, Rara, uh-uh, no two sprays for the... Whew, cha. It's disgusting in the best of ways, says Helen. Sweat and body fluids? Kira says, adds to list. Emilio says, makes me want to smell it. 
Emilio, uh, I haven't smelled joy since the 80s. Whatever you love it or hate it, you will never forget it. Good choice for a review. Thank you for a final send-off for her. Oh, thank you so much, Christy. Daniel says, update for Australians. You can also get Patu Joy at Chemist Warehouse, the other toilet only. Aisha says, Jacob, your reviews are so expensive. Thank you so much. Joy was the most expensive perfume in the world. Jacob's are the most expensive reviews in the world. Um, sorry, guys, I just scrolled away. Let me just find you. <laughs> mm, looking, looking, looking. What you got cooking? Ah, there we have it. Amina says, I believe I have read somewhere that it was the signature scent of Jackie O. Oh, dear. <laughs> Jackie Kennedy wore it. No, people are saying. I'm not so sure if she did, but I know Pete Burns wore it. <laughs> and I wonder how it smelled on him. Was it this fecal on him as well? Rara says, I think I can tolerate more indole than the average person. Apparently, from reviews of indolic scents, they just don't smell feces to me. But odd, the indoles in the current joy hit hard for me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Let me drink some water. <clears throat> Daniel says, maybe... They put a tiny amount of real jasmine in and make up the difference with synthetics. Striking to the laws later, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but this thing, guys, it is probably your refined nose. I really want to smell this one. Sheldrake is responsible for Chanel's field, says Rich Mitch. Oh, a good, f you know, Sheldrake? Oh, what a name. First of all, the name is so sexy. And then, damn, Sheldrake is always involved in the best of things. Um... Rara says, I think I might be one of the few that prefer Grandiflorum to Sambac. Sambac is too fruity and bubblegum-like when dominant for me. Uh, Rara says, Toisha, or I'm weird, because my favorites keep getting discontinued too. Um, they all the time. Oh, and let me tell you, only with the Chanel number, because people say, oh, Joy smells like Chanel number five. It does not smell like Chanel number five. Has a little bit of a resemblance to Chanel number five, only in the Eau de Parfum concentration. Because only the parfum concentration goes into that slight skanking and that current formulation is not even because they're, they're, they've watered it down. Chanel has watered it down, but older, like 80s version of this one and 90s version, when it dries down, I have, well, this one is kind of turning relatively dark. I like to let them age well, but I have a bottle, 35 mil, the flat bottles um, from the 90s and... Um, the liquid turned almost black. It still has that civet in there. Uh, that one, again, number five is famous for the jasmine, but jasmine with civet or musk. It has that poopiness in there, but very delicate and covered by other beautiful flowers. So this one is very, very well blended. So you never get that full blown fecal smell like you get here. This thing is insane. Insane. I've never smelled something so insane. Uh, and it's so disgusting that you just, if you crave it, you, mm, I, I sound sick just saying it, but it, it, it's, it really is like that. Oh, thank you for subscribing VF. Um, anyway, remind me. Oh, right. Uh, so Chris, Christy says my elderly fashion merchandising teacher wore it. She was stern, but kind. Oh, it's so Chiti Munoz subscribed too. Thank you so much for subscribing. My elderly fashion merchandising teacher wore it. She was stern but kind. She smelled intense, rich, but never overwhelming. It was fascinating. I'm telling you, on women, it, has a, it develops differently than on men, huh? The indoles. Lord says, Sod pain, give me horny. Uh, Emilio says, Remind me of the original uncensored band music video for Happiness and Slavery by Nine Inch Nails. Nin. Kira loves Nine Inch Nails. And Nin forever. Um, Aisha says, Only Jacob could describe a perfume as smelling like S-H-I-T and make me still want to buy it. <laughs> Thank you, Aisha. I'll take that as a compliment. It smells like shit. You need it, says Rara. Yes, you do. The power of Jacob's is candy fluff. <laughs> I need a shower and a cigarette now, says Kira. Oh my God, you guys. Um... Where are we? Looking for... The bottle is so beautiful, says Daniel. It is amazing. And it's really heavy and sturdy, too. It's not a cheap bottle. 
Um, Letty says, my idol, Maria Felix, used this perfume, and I think she embodies this perfume. I'm going to get a bottle for sure. Should I get DDT or Eau de Parfum? Ooh, Letty. Ah. <laughs> I mean, if you can handle indoles, get the Eau de Parfum. But truth be told, they're both really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. I mean, budget permitting, both. But... The Eau de Parfum goes a little bit more powdery after time, and the Eau de Toilette stays more green. So you got more green here, and you got more powder here. So, you guys, the green and the powdery fecal masterpiece. Get it while you can, because it's discontinued. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> I got my boobs set. Check that out. I got my... Ooh. This one just pipe up to bosom. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me put it back there. Ha! Okay. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. I hope you liked this video. If you have, thumb it up. And subscribe to my channel. Why not? And become part of the Fashion Bunker. You can also push the Join button next to the subscription button. And become a member today and gain access to extra perks. Join me also on Patreon. Super Dick of All Spelled Together and gain access to extra perks there as well. Like, for example, your name being listed here on this wonderful scrolling bar for eternity. You are, when you're on this list, you have officially become the co-producer of the Fashion Bunker and the main supporter too. Thank you guys so much. Thank you also to all my super chatters, to all the donors of the super chats who uh, are helping sustain the Fashion Bunker as well. And thank you to my live co-chatters uh, that helped me review all these fragrances and all this crazy stuff that I always talk about. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get to the point, but when we get to the point, we get to the point. And as I said, the video is also longer because also joy doesn't let you come. So, neither does this video. It's supposed to be about tension and release, just milking it to the right level but never really getting there. Except we have enough information now to understand a bit more about indoles, about linalol. We have more information to understand what jasmine is all about, how it functions, what this flower really means, and what this flower means in connection to such a such an incredible masterpiece that is Joy by Jean Patou. Perfumes are meant to make us dream. But nobody ever said that those dreams are pleasant dreams. Some of the most beautiful dreams I've ever had in my life were nightmares. And Joy belongs to that faction of perfumes that remind me of the most beautiful nightmares that I've ever had in my life. They're worth every sweat every tension, every spasm during sleep. These types of nightmares are worth it, completely, utterly, and fully. So if you can get your hands on Joy, I highly recommend it. Even if you're not gonna wear it forever, you know that it's over, they're not gonna produce it anymore. So you have, you have a big chunk of perfume history in your collection, and you're always gonna be able to go back to it, even if you're just gonna sniff it out of the bottle and not spray it on. You're gonna kind of be reminded of, of what art really is, true art. And true art is not about pleasure. True art is about showing you the mirror. True artist creates art that shows you the mirror, shows the mirror to society. True art is not just some pretty painting that you purchase so that you have something nice to complement your furniture in your living room. That's not art. True art is something that is hard to look at difficult to look at. True art is something that when you look at it, something in your stomach just turns upside down because it speaks to you, because it speaks the truth. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.